Okay, 2016 the GMC Sierra. This also applies to uh, the uh, Silverado. If you're having this problem here, where it says service, driver assist system, and you do not feel the left hand seat vibrator vibrate, it's because it's trying to vibrate to tell you that you're close to an object. And when it tries to vibrate that vibrator, it, it, uh, it can tell that the vibrator isn't operable. It's either shorted to power, shorted to uh, ground. I've already hooked the scanner to this, um, and that's what I got. Was a in my case, it was a short to power. So we're going to go after the vibrator. We're going to try to repair the vibrator that's uh, in this truck. If we can, I'm going to order another one, and uh, we're going to go after it and see uh, see what it takes to to get it out. So. Again, this applies, I know to Silverado and Sierra. I don't know if the Tahoes and, and stuff are gonna be the, the the same deal. They should be. Uh, mainly, if you got two vibrators. You got a left and a right. If you stopped feeling one or the other, that's the vibrator you need to go after. If you have a scanner, it's easy enough to hook up and see which vibrator is causing the problem. Um, so anyway, that's what the plan is. So let me get in position and we'll figure out what it takes to get to the vibrator as easy as possible. And you've got a screw. Uh, let me see if I can get in position here. Um, let me see if I can find it. I'm gonna put my finger on. I can't see what I'm doing because I'm backwards here. Okay, right here. Right where my finger's at. There's a Torx here. When you take that screw out, so this is the front one, that other one was the back one. Then you lift up on the trim here, and it unbuckles it from the seat. Then you've got these little plastic retainers that just clip in um, and hold the hold, holds the upholstery to the seat. The vibrator is right around in this area. So what I'm going to do is try to unclip Okay, I'm going to put the camera down for a minute. I'm going to get these unclipped and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, I got the the two here on the side, and then this this front one, and I think I think that's all of them. Now nope, there's another one right here on the front, so I'm gonna get there. We go. Might be able to get it. There we go. And there. See how that seat cushion and there's the there's the end of the vibrator right there so I'm gonna reach up there I'm gonna pull that out I'll try to do it on camera okay there's the wiring I'm gonna have to set the camera down
Okay, there it is. So it looks like all that's wrong is the wires busted. So we're gonna we're gonna fix that and then we're gonna see if it works. And then put this back together. So there's that. Let's go ahead and get the back into the wire again. Let me get my light. Here's the wiring right here that broke. Here's the plug for it. Let me grab something to pop that plastic retainer loose. Okay, got me a tool here to hopefully let me get that out of the way. Okay. Off. So that's what we got. The vibrator more than likely is still good. I don't know what voltage this operates off of, but we'll once I splice these wires back together, we're gonna test it to make sure that uh, that it does work. These are about 50 bucks if you end up buying one. I don't know if that's the actual part number you need or not. Does not look like there's any other numbers on it. Might even open this thing up just to see what it looks like inside. Okay. I think I got everything I need here. Basically what we're gonna do is we wanna splice these wires together. Just getting the wires out of the sheath. Now if you can, try to stagger these. I'm not going to because I don't know how much length these things actually need. If I shorten it up, in order to stagger it, I'd have to shorten the, uh, the wires a little bit. I don't really want to have to do that. I do have some relatively small splices. I don't know if these crimpers will crimp down tight enough or not, but we're going to try it. Set it on the tightest crimp. You do want to make sure that your red is the red and black is the black.
All right, let me get the power supply set up and we're gonna see if this uh, vibrator works. Okay, so what I've got is I've got some T-pins stuck into the back of the connector. Since I don't know what the voltage of this operates off of, what I like to do, turn turn all the knobs down, the current and the voltage on the power supply. I don't know if this is like a 5 volt or if it's 12 volt. I'm thinking more than likely it's 12 volt, but I don't want to, since I don't know, I'm going to start off low. So in this case, we're going to crank the current all the way up with the voltage turned all the way down. Red, red alligator or the positive alligator clip to the red wire negative to negative I'm going to hold this so I can feel it then I'm just going to start cranking up the coarse voltage knob okay I can already feel it that's three volts So it is going to work fine. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tape this real tight. Run this sheath, the spiral wrap. I'm going to run it up over this uh, as far as I can. And then uh, reinstall it. And hopefully now I've got a left vibrator that works and I stop getting that annoying... Uh, service the driver assist so again cheap and easy fix uh, I'm pretty sure this is a common problem I think the wires do break oh you know what I said I was going to open this up didn't I let's do that Let me get a little screwdriver. Looks looks like there's just clips. Now I probably will buy a new one because I'll probably screw this up. So there you have it. All that is, I'm going to turn it on so you can see what's happening here. It's just an, it's just an off balance weight. About as simple as it gets. Cheapest, I mean, it looks like just a little cheap 50 cent motor with a piece of, it looks like maybe, I don't know if that's brass or, or not, but can you see that? So even, even the ones, even the ones that have the wires broke right flush here. All you got to do is pop, take, snap this apart, pull this out, and solder these wires. Resolder them straight to the terminals of the motor, and then snap it all back together, and you can get away with that. But if you know, I had wires still sticking out here that I could crimp to. And if you wanted to solder, I mean, another good way to do it is to solder these wires and then slide heat shrink up, um, and do it that way. Um, I've got faith that these cramps a hold these are aviation uh, splices so I I'm I'm happy enough with that they've got their own built-in strain relief so they generally work pretty good um, and we're back together trying to So there you have it. Quick and simple fix.
So I'm going to tape this up. I'll come back. I'm going to tape it up and I'll show you whenever I'm done. Okay, here's the finished product. Taped all the way up to the strain relief. You can see where the splices are at. And I cut the old tape all the way off this uh, spiral wrap. And went ahead and just retaped the whole thing. So this should this should be a good fix for a long time, hopefully. So I'm just going to put this back in. I'm going to shove it back up in that hole and uh, plug it in and hook those clips back. Uh, I'll try to show you how those clips hook back. Now I went ahead you can see how that trim pops right off there. Two screws and then you just kind of lift that trim up. I don't know if you can see the little hooks right here where it just hooks on this bar. Right here is where one screw went, and then there's a, that screw in the back, and then this whole thing will lift up. I didn't even unplug the connector. If you wanted to remove this whole thing, of course I don't think you could because of the seat belt goes through it right here. But you could disconnect that connector and you could actually lay it up into the seat. But uh, let me kind of show you. These are those clips, and they just fold up underneath, and they, they literally snap right on. It's, it's a pretty pretty simple deal um, you know I don't know you may need to push down like this to get the access to be able to snap them on but so that hole you know is right up in here where where that vibrator goes so I'm just going to shove it up in there and uh, put this thing back together and then we're going to try it out I want to try to show you how these things go in. If you see the little slot right there, there's just a there's a flat piece of I don't know if that's metal metal frame. It just slides right up in there, and you'll you'll feel it snap. And that's all there is to it. I didn't have to do this. I didn't have to unclip this one. There's two of them here. There's one here, and then one here. So. The wiring, let me show you the back. Of course, don't forget you've got the, the one screw right down here in the corner that you get to that way. Then you got this screw right here. And then I've got it I've got the plug plugged in. Got the plastic retainer there. So if I wasn't filming, this probably was a 30 minute job. So that's all there is to it. Let's see if uh, I don't know if it's gonna. nothing um, of course there's no okay so there's nothing behind me right now um, you can actually if you have to back up to another car or a wall or something you can actually ops check the vibrators like that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the scanner to uh, to activate it and I tried that the other day and of course it uh, would not vibrate so I knew the vibrator the left vibrator was the problem well I didn't know if it was the actual vibrator or if it was the circuit I assumed it was the vibrator because um, that seems like it's the the uh, You know that. Whoops, that was the wrong button. Seems like that's the common problem, and I can't remember what that is under. So I don't think it's that.
Hmm. Chassis control module, maybe? That's the one thing about these scanners that's got all kinds of um, stuff is that you just never do know where some things are, are hidden at. Okay, so I found it. Seat memory control module. Active test. Seat cushion haptic motors. So you got driver's seat left, driver's seat right. The right one always worked, the left one would not. So we're going to activate it and see um, what happens. I don't know if you can hear that, but I can hear it and definitely feel it. While we're here, we'll go ahead and do the right. There's the right. They both feel about the same. So that pretty much uh, took care of it. That's probably the cheapest way out right there is just to fix it yourself. Like I say, you could solder those wires, tape them, solder them, and heat shrink them, uh, put butt splices on them, you know, whatever you got, whatever your skill level is, it, it'll probably be just fine. Um, worst case, the connection's going to break and it's not going to work again, but at least you'll uh, know where to go and how to fix it, even if it means buying a new one for about 50 bucks and sticking it in. But uh, anyway... 2016 GMC Sierra, the Silverado. I'm not sure the year ranges, but if, if you've got seat vibrators and one of them quit working, that would be where I would start looking. Take care.